It's a Christmas card. It's got gum leaves. So it's an Australian Christmas card. Let me show you how I put it together. It's really easy and it's double-sided. Three circles and three strings. This beautiful deep red, nice and thick. I'm going to paint within it and I'm gonna paint them with these metallic paints. This is a quill size zero, 00. I'm gonna start off with putting the matching color, this beautiful rosy color, and I'm going to apply it in a circular manner, just that will assist in getting a beautiful cylinder kind of look. It's not a cylinder, is it? Sphere, I meant sphere. Wash it off, remove excess moisture, take it up to nothing slowly. I went outside the line down there. I'll make sure I put extra splatter down there. Wash it off again, remove excess moisture. This time I'm going over the top edge. I want to aim to leave a little white highlight Come up a little more, wash it off, remove all moisture and come up gently to the top and leave a little bit of white. Good, that worked nicely. Now, this one can be purple. I don't know how the purple will look with the red, but um, I have lots of purple Christmas decorations. I love purple, need a little more paint. I think the red one has the most pigment in it. The purple's got very little. I'm really having to top up. Anyway, I am using the belly of the brush to gently wipe around the line. I'm trying harder to stay in the lines this time. It's just like being a child, isn't it? Some, when you have to stay in the lines. A little bit of water, remove the excess, bring it up. Touching that beautiful edge to release the ink. Touch that edge, bring it up, get rid of all the paint, remove excess moisture, and again, oh, I might can finish touching that up to there. I'm gonna leave a little gap, and my goal is to have a little highlight. Uh, it would be a little further away from the edge this time. There, and it could do with more pigment down here. It's not very dark at all, down there. That's okay, pretty good. It's a little bit there, not blended. I've put on too much just there. Remove excess moisture and I'll just spread that a little bit. So the third one, I've got a reddish one, a purplish one, and I could go green. I wonder if that would look fabulous. It's really a rather um, good green, as in there's a fair bit of pigment and there's a lot of metallic. I'm going to leave tiny little gaps so I don't release the pigment on the side of the first two and I'll have a bigger, I'm going to draw it in this time, well paint it in up the top so I know where I'm going. Wash off all the moisture. I thought this one was highly pigmented but it's not. It's subtle. It's probably better for a, um, a glaze. Uh, anyway, that's okay. It's the one at the back, so that's not a problem. Just leaving the tiniest little gap there because I don't want to release the pigment. And okay, wash it off completely. Remove the excess moisture. I just want to feather those edges a tiny bit so it's not a stark. Remove excess moisture again. I don't want a stark highlight. Oh, well, I got one, didn't I? <laughs> this one's really stark. I wonder if it's not too late if I remove the excess moisture just to massage that line a little bit and move so it's not quite so... Okay, I'm really scrubbing now. I'll lift off. Can I lift off? Lift off? That's okay. I don't think I'll worry about it too much. I'm going to go back to this um, beautiful pencil and this time I've got some water and I'm going to give it a lovely wet line. Dip it, dip it into the water and draw a line. I like that. 
dip it into the water, draw a line. I'm just freestyling, dip it into the water. Now I need that to go through this wet green one uh, to go up to the top. So I'll just remember to wait and uh, do that one a little later. I don't mind these at all. I want to make it Australian, so I want to incorporate some gum leaves. Got another ink tanks pencil, this is called Apple Green. This one is dry, so I'm going to have some gum leaves that are attached up here and then they fall down over my ball ball. I'm going to trial, well, see what it's like if I wet the nib, remove excess and let's say the stick attaches up there, comes down, part of it would go outside and part of it inside. Wet it again, there's that little stick, I'll attach it up there, just re-emphasize it, come down and many gum leaves have come off to this really thin point. It's all right, okay, go back, wet. Let's add another gum leaf and it's gonna come down this way this time, over that one and to a beautiful point. Wet it again, start about here and keep it curvy and make that point go off. That's not too bad. This one can have some little tiny gum leaves just while I'm waiting for it to dry. Put some little tiny gum leaves in. Little baby ones, touch it a little bit. And there's the tail. They're kind of like they've got tails. I think I shall take a risk and put one in, attach it up there and put in a little baby one in here with a tail. Oh, it should go over to that, I think. Actually, it's sitting behind, so it probably shouldn't have gone under there. Ah, well. Back into wetting the tip, and perhaps a stick comes over there, and it bounces up a little bit and then goes behind. It can be a lovely wonky one with a thin stick. This is going to have a um, line going up there. Could have planned that a little better, couldn't I? I think it'll go along there. And therefore, there'll be a stick here and the gum leaves will come down, sit over and go off. Down, go fat and then go thin. So they've got always got sticks at the end, not sticks. <laughs> they've got like, you know, a little thin bit that attaches to the branch. Wet it again. I like this idea of the wet line and maybe this one comes down and just draws around. They do lots of beautiful curling things, that's for sure. That one can come up and go behind that one like that. I'll just wet that again to make it up like that. I'll just redraw that bit there. I'm pressing so hard and <laughs> some chunking off little bits of, um, <laughs> of the green pencil. So I'm going to give them a little bit of tone and just moving that out of the way, keeping that pencil up here so I remember which one it was in case I want to come back to it. So I think that this beautiful colour here, this green, will be just superb for my leaves. So here's my slightly larger brush. I'm going to get rid of that one. I want to go a little smaller. That's got a bit of magenta on it. Just clean that off. And then I'm going to grab, but if you don't have these metallic colors, just mix up a lovely pale wash. I'm going to give it a little bit of color there and wash it off and come down and get lighter uh, to the end. Same again, bit of water, Massage the colour. That's quite wet, so I won't do that one just yet. This one's nice and dry. Come down. Now, will I colour outside or inside? Oh, outside. Come down and then bring the colour down halfway. Wash it off and just with a damp brush, bring it down. I'm activating that red in the background. That's beautiful. I'm going to come all the way down and activate that green. Doesn't really look like um, half a leaf. I'll deal with that later, I think. 
Okay, wet brush, massage colour, and again, come down, splitting the leaf, put in some tone, wash it off, remove excess moisture, and follow the leaf all the way down. And I'm just massaging down here. Massage, massage, massage. Um, and I might just soften that a little bit too. One more, or two, oh, a few more. <laughs> bit of water. I'll do this one, then that one, I think. This is pretty dry. Oh yeah, lovely. Now these two have been doing that side and that one I did that side. I think I'll switch sides. Come down and do the left side of the leaf just to, you know, create interest. Wash it off, remove excess moisture and bring it down there. It's picking up the red outline. It's picking up a little bit of the green outline and uh, coming down, that's quite lovely. It's just switched beautifully. Wash that off, re-wet. This one will come down thin and then get fat. I've run out of room to wash it off. I'm just going to remove most of that colour and there's barely anything on my brush. All I'm doing is massaging that paint around and then just add a little bit over there. I've got that one to go. Oh, it's dry. Great. Massage, paint. Bring it down over there. Wash it straight off so that I can graduate down. It just makes it a little bit more interesting, I think. And then I've got the little cutie up here that goes up. And I think I will paint in the upside. Bring it along there. I still have to do that stick and um, all right it's time to take a moment to evaluate how is that going I'm very unsure about that line there I think it uh, just needs a little more embellishment and oh I know the answer back in a sec I think the answer is to add a gold marker. Oh, it's new. I need to get it working. Get it working on here. <gasps> Whoa, so glad I didn't do that on my page. I did not expect that to rush out like that. Isn't it fantastic though? Did you see how intense that was? Wow. Oh, stinky. Okay. I'm gonna just start the line where it doesn't matter much here. Now, if I just go outside of the green line, I'll get to see both of my lines. Just go outside. Is that good or worse? Hmm, let's see. Bit of gold up there. Bit of gold there, bit of gold going outside the green line. Bring it down. Yeah, it's better when I join it to the middle line, gives it a consistency. Okay, so I'll go down the middle a bit, then go out on the outside. Oh, that's better. Down the middle, down the, oh, I went on the wrong side. <laughs> down the outside, down there, down the middle, and down the outside, down the middle, down the, oops, wrong side, outside. Should put a bit more gold up there, I think. And then a little more over there, kind of joins it up a little bit. Oopsie. 
comes down, go into the middle, come down to there, and then come all the way down on that one to the end. Ha <laughs> ha So much better. I'm really, um, really, really pleased with that. Now what I want to do uh, is add some um, gold splatter. And although it's really tempting to go dot, dot, dot like that, I know I will be dissatisfied unless I use gold paint. So here we go. Here's my palette and gold lives permanently on my palette. I've got this beautiful gold. Just mixing it around. Get another beautiful, um, get another brush, do the drumstick method. Um, it's a card, so I'm going to splatter it all over and have some of that lovely splatter go on that side. It's tempting, actually, to draw a gum leaf over there. For, so the back of the card is a bit more interesting. Yeah, what the hell? I think I will. I'll just put that down for a second. And one of these leaves can come down as though it's coming out the side. Down. There, there we go, a bonus one, and then I'll get this lovely, oh, it can be pink, just for something different over there, like so, and down, and then add the gold, and gold line down here. It probably doesn't like being wet, so going on the outside is fine. I missed it down there. <laughs> oh, I know, I haven't done the um, red line. Right, that pencil. This line comes down here. This line, this is hanging in front, but are the leaves hanging in front? No. I'm going to make that, oh, right, go down, go behind, go down. I probably didn't even need to put that in, did I? All right, let's join these up to here, this to there, adding touches of gold to it. And that might be dry enough now to go around, join that. Now I can splatter. Okay, gold paint. And let's go over here first. Just love a bit of splatter. Bit more. Okay, that is so cool. I'm not sure I like that highlight. I should have made that a little darker, but that ship has way sailed. I think that gold just um, resolved everything. Okay, I'm going to show you how to take it off the block. First, I need to dry it. Okay, I know this leaf looks a bit random at the moment, but it's going to look better when it's folded. This is a block. It's a bao hong. It's called a paper pad, but it's not. It's a block. It's glued all round with this fabulous arrow to tell you where to stick your little leaf in. If you bought one of the leaves that this brand sells. Or you stick a palette knife, a, a butter knife, if you don't have a palette knife, and you s slide it all the way around and it releases your painting. And the painting is nice and flat. So there's uh, usually no flattening required. I'll just fold it and then sign it, because there's little tiny bits of that gold that are not quite dry and I don't want to make splodgy messes on the pretty cut. So now you can see that when that leaf has gone around the back it's um, quite pretty. I'm just slowly folding. I'm not going to bother to use a bone folder to get a really hard line because some of these watercolour papers just um, split at the side so I'm just massaging it with my finger. All right, it's much better like that. Then I'm going to use the gold again, a little tiny brush, wipe off the water, pick up some gold, and just put my initials, MC. And I just do initials because it's quite a small area of painting. And uh, when I sell it, I will put one of my stickers on the back 
so that if people loved it, they can come and find me again. Oops, I am spreading gold. That's all right, I'm about to make another um, card. 